Go on a great journey to grow new city with strategy and cunning. Build your card and tableau to win in Castle Up. And today we'll be teaching you how to play Castle Up, a game designed by Marty and Oriel Grundixe and published by Wally Games. You're using a prototype copy of the game, so the rules and components may not be final. And hi everyone, it's Stella. And Tarrant. Let's get to the game. In Castle Up, players are competing cities in the Middle Ages, fighting against each other to build up and have the strongest city. Beginning as just a humble castle, players will use the actions on their buildings to purchase or upgrade buildings from the supply to make their city stronger, as well as making use of the special action cards available in the supply. They'll need to build up their abilities to attack and defend as warfare will begin as the game goes on. After three eras of play are complete, whoever has built up the highest scoring city, including majorities in the different colours of buildings, will be the winner. To set up, take all of the double-sided building cards flipped over to their coloured ready sides and separate them into four decks, Era 1, Era 2, Era 3 and the castles. Shuffle the Era 1, 2 and 3 cards separately and then form them into a single stack with Era 1 on top and Era 3 on the bottom. You can offset the deck slightly so that you can always tell how many are left in each era. The castles are the starting buildings. Give one to each player along with a helper card and return the rest to the box. Make supplies of the four types of resource tokens, food, manpower, supplies and gold. This includes a mix of tokens worth one and three. Choose a first player who takes the initiative token and then, in clockwise turn order, give each player starting gold. At two players this will be one and two. At three players, one, one and two. And at four players, one, one, two and two. Finally, set up the common board area in reach of all players. Your layered deck of building cards goes at the top of the left column, with room for four cards below. And the four coloured action cards go in the second column, with room for a building discard pile. You're now ready to play. Castle Up is played in rounds. To begin each round, you'll see the board with new building cards from the deck. And then during the round, each player will take one turn, going clockwise from whoever begins with initiative. When the round is done, you'll clear the board and go on to the next round. The aim of Castle Up is to score the highest scoring city of buildings which you can, as well as to attack others' cities and to defend your own, since a damaged building will not score. At the end of the game, each building will score points equal to its era, or one more than its era if it's a gold building. There'll be three bonus points for whoever has the majority in each of the red, green and blue buildings. Plus there are some buildings which have their own special victory points conditions. Each player's city is limited to a maximum of six buildings plus the castle, making it a game of very tight and strategic decisions for which buildings you choose to keep. So now that we understand the basics and the objective, let's have a look at each phase in detail. The first step of any round is to prepare the board and you'll deal cards from the top of the building deck top to bottom into the left column. If this is a two player game, you'll deal out three cards and then discard the fourth, while at three or four players deal them all out into the column. This means the game will have the same number of rounds regardless of player count without having to remove any cards from the deck. Do note that at the start of the game all four of these action cards will be here, but that won't necessarily be the case in subsequent rounds. This is fine, you don't adjust the action cards at all during this phase. Next you'll go to the player turns and each player will take one turn, starting from whoever currently has initiative and going clockwise around the table. Now on your first turn your city is only going to comprise your castle, but I've jumped ahead a little bit to give you a few more buildings so I can explain how this works. To begin your turn, buildings could be in one of three states. They could be ready, where they're face up and horizontal, exhausted, where they're face up and vertical, or damaged, where they're face down. 
your first step is to restore all of your exhausted cards, returning them from exhausted to ready. Damage buildings are not changed. You may now take any number of actions in any order, subject to the following types and restrictions. You may exhaust a ready building in order to take the action printed down its bottom. Some cards have multiple actions on them. Here I could exhaust my castle to do one of these three actions. Once a building is exhausted, you cannot take one of its actions again until it's been restored to ready. The exception is a passive action indicated by this hourglass. These are always available or in effect as long as the card is face up. There are no actions on damaged cards. You may perform a single purchase action, indicated by this icon on your turn card. Each purchase action will allow you to gain one new card into your city, which could be by purchasing, refurbishing, promoting, or buying an action card. You may perform one battle phase, indicated by this sword and shield icon. When you do this, you'll need to exhaust buildings which give you attack swords, and you'll use this to attack other players. And finally, you can take either of the two gold actions any number of times. These are to exchange three matching resources for gold, or to spend gold to repair a damaged building. So to summarize that again, take any number of actions on your turn, which can be to do an active action off a building by exhausting it, taking a single purchase action to get a new card, doing a single battle phase to attack another card, or doing any number of gold exchanges. Do note that the active or passive abilities on some of these cards are to gain extra purchase or battle phases. For example, I could exhaust my castle to get a second purchase on my turn, while this passive battle phase action on the command center would give me a second battle phase every turn. Once you've taken all the actions you wish to take, play will pass to the next player clockwise. So now first we'll look at the four different ways you can use a purchase action, and these are to purchase a building, refurbish a building, promote a building, or gain an action card. To purchase a new building, choose one of the building cards available in the row. The deck and discard pile do not count. Note the card's cost in its top right. Here it's three supplies and one manpower. Pay that cost back to the supply. Note that for this and all other spending purposes in the game, gold is considered wild, so this would be one of many valid ways to pay this cost. Take the card, without refilling the empty slot, and add it on its ready side to your city. You can begin using its actions right away. You may never have more than seven buildings in your city, so if this was your eighth, you'd need to discard down. However, it's much more likely that you'll take the second option, which is refurbish. When you refurbish, you still choose any one card from the trade row which you wish to build. But now, instead of newly adding it to your city, you'll be replacing an existing building from your city and getting a resource discount equal to the cost of the building you're replacing. Here, if I'm refurbishing the lumber camp into the alchemy school, the two food and one supply are already accounted for. All I'd need to pay is the one manpower. I would then replace the lumber camp with the alchemy school, discarding the lumber camp to the top of the discard pile. The building you replace in a refurbishment action may not be exhausted. In this case, I could not refurbish the lumber camp into the alchemy school. You are allowed to refurbish a damaged building. However, the resource discount that you get for it is equal to half of its resource cost rounded down. You can choose the resources. This was a damaged tavern, and because its total resource cost was three, you can take one of those resources for the refurbishment. Here, if I chose it to be the supplies, then I could spend two food and a manpower to refurbish the damaged tavern into the alchemy school. The new building still comes in ready when you do this. Finally, you can refurbish multiple buildings at once to produce one new one. Here, for example, discarding both the tavern and this damaged archery range to pay the full cost of the alchemy school. 
The third purchase option is to promote a building. If you have a building which shows this gear icon next to its name, then it is linked with a card from a future era. To promote the building, simply take the linked card from the display and replace the older card without paying any additional resource cost. The card you replace must be ready, it cannot be exhausted or damaged. And be aware that these upgradable cards can be purchased or refurbished to in the usual way by a player who does not have the prior building. The last way to spend a purchase action is to take an action card from the display. There are four action cards in the game, although if other players have already taken some, you may not have all available to you on your turn. Each card has a different effect depending on your era. If you purchase the Collect Taxes, then immediately gain a number of resources of your choice depending on the era. This question mark icon allows you only to take one of the three basic resources. Gold is not allowed with this icon. If you purchase the Take Initiative action, then this is how you gain the initiative and become the first player in future rounds. You must pay the depicted resource cost to do this, one or two basic resources or a gold depending on the era. This is the only way initiative changes hands. If no one takes this card, the same player will keep this token all game. The other two actions apply during battle, so we'll come back to those later. Any action cards you gain go to your player area, although they don't count towards your building limit. The card stays with you until the starting phase of your next turn. It's only at the same time as you're restoring all your cards that you return actions to their place in the common board. Now we'll have a look at the active abilities on some of your cards. Particularly early in the game, a lot of these cards are going to be very simple actions which let you gain or exchange resources. Your starting castle, for example, will give you one of each of the three basic resources, or any two basic resources. Remember again, the question mark does not mean gold. Other early buildings just provide simple resource combos. Others offer exchanges. You could exhaust the alchemy school to exchange one basic resource for another, or exhaust this card and another one to gain a single gold. Cards then get stronger and more specialized as the game proceeds with specific effects like this one, which lets you exhaust another player's card, or ones which combo with your city. Here you would count up all of the green buildings you had and gain a resource for each. You'll also recall that as a free action, you can exchange three matching resources for gold, and also as a free action, you can spend the gold cost in the top right corner of a damaged building to repair it. The repair action is indicated by this hammer, and it's available as an active action for a cheaper cost on some building cards. For example, here, spending two basic resources and exhausting this card to repair another. Exhausting Heavy Crane would let you repair another building for no resource cost at all. Most other effects relate to battle. There are three icons associated with battle. This one, showing the sword and shield, represents a battle phase, and for each one of these you have, you may launch one battle as the attacker on your turn. The sword without the shield represents your attack strength in that battle, and the shield without the sword represents your defense. When you launch an attack against another player, choose any single building card in the opponent's city to attack, except for the castle. Your target could be ready, damaged, or exhausted. Exhaust any number of ready buildings and count up the attack swords on them. In this case, I could exhaust this for two swords and either this one for a third sword or spend a resource to make it a fourth sword. This is your attack strength. The defender may now exhaust any number of ready buildings which have defense points on them. Remember, you only restore cards at the start of your turn, meaning that you'll want to leave defensive cards in their ready position when your turn is over. If you purchase the Prepare Defenses card on your prior turn, you may also exhaust that for the defense points based on the era. Suppose here I exhausted both of these, I would have four defense points. 
Now determine whether the attack points minus the defense points is equal or greater than the building's endurance, this number here. In this case, it was four minus four, so the difference is zero and the attack fails. In this case here, with these two exhausted, the difference would be four minus three is one, still not enough to damage the barracks. If the difference does meet or exceed the endurance, here for example, it's four minus two is two, then the building in question is damaged, flipped over to its damaged side. The damaged side of each building has the same endurance as the ready side. So in this case, if the military barracks were attacked, it would be four minus two is two, and on this occasion, the building would instead be destroyed. Move to the discard pile. Anytime one of your buildings is destroyed by this or any other means, you may reclaim up to half of the resource cost rounded down. Again, you choose among the total resources which formed part of the cost. If the attack difference is at least twice of a face-up building's endurance, then it will be damaged and destroyed at once in the same attack. Since you need to exhaust cards to get access to their battle points, if you do have a second battle phase on your turn, you'll need to ration those attack points between the battles, otherwise your second one will be very weak. Some buildings, particularly those in later eras, give you various ways of paying for particularly strong attacks or give you flexibility between attack and defense. So you'll want to make sure that one way or the other you're preparing for the eventuality of war in the third era. Gaining the prepare defenses action can help you, but be warned that this is exhausted like any other card. You'll only be able to rely on it once. Finally, if you purchase the Loot the Peasants action, then as your battle phase, you can attack the peasants, exhaust the amount of attack points you need, and then gain the corresponding resources. Unlike the other actions, which are split into eras 1, 2, and 3, all Loot the Peasants options are available throughout the game. Once all players have had their turns, clear the board ready for the next round. From top to bottom, you'll discard the building cards to the discard pile. Do this in order because sometimes the top card matters. And otherwise leave everything as it was. The initiative marker only changes hands if someone took this action card. You'll then proceed to dealing cards out to start the next round. A new era is considered to have begun as soon as the first card of that era is dealt from the deck into the row. The game ends at the end of the round in which the entire draw deck has been emptied. Players now count up their final scores based solely on their undamaged buildings. Damaged buildings do not score. Each green, blue or red building is worth points equal to its era. So these buildings are worth 14, these are worth 8. Each gold building is worth one more point than its era. So this building's worth two, and this one's worth four. Some buildings provide extra victory points in text, so this building would be worth another two. Finally, you'll determine majority points for the most green, blue, and red buildings, but not the most gold. Whoever has the most buildings scores three points, with ties going to later era buildings. Here, this player has two blue buildings to one, so would claim the points. And in red, each player has two buildings, but this player has an era three and two, while this player has a two and one. So era threes would break the tie and this player would score. If there's still a tie, here both players have one green building and they're both era threes, then all tied players get one point. The player with the highest score wins. If tied, whoever has the most gold building breaks the tie, and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Castle Up. Check out the project page of Castle Up. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you have a great day. See you next time.